Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, I extend a very warm welcome to you all in this course on Sociology of Sanitation. This is the eighth lecture in the series of ten lecture on Sociology of Sanitation. In last lecture, seventh lecture, we discussed about public health and sanitation. How is sanitation and public health, these two are correlated and what is the role of society, social norms, patterns and culture in maintaining the balance between these two sanitation and public health. In today's eighth lecture, we are going to decipher something about the sanitation at international level. What is the situation of sanitation at international level? As we all know that, when we talk about McLuhan's global village or when we talk about Today's in our own concept Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, in that Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, we cannot think of compartmentalization of Indian society or particular area that yes, we are good in particular area, may they may do anything that is least concerned for us. Of course not, when we are talking about that particular thing, when we are talking about globalization, when we are talking about international scenario, of course, we have to look after, we have to take care. Of course, we all are clearly dependent upon one another because in particular area, if environment is clean or other way around, it may affect positively or negatively the nearby areas also. So, it is necessary and it is the high time to discuss what is the scenario of sanitation at international level. Not only that we all are of course part of that international scenario, but we are supposed to learn something if anywhere particular improvement is made or anywhere that situation is deteriorating, we should take lesson from those things. At the same time, when we come across different steps, they are supposed to be taken at international level or certain data provided at international level on that basis, we can mold our psyche that yes, the problem is like that or situation of sanitation is satisfactory. If not, if it is not satisfactory, then what are those things which we as an individual, as a part of particular society, what is our responsibility, how can we contribute at international level. For understanding all these things, we are supposed to discuss facts related to sanitation at international level. Before we start discussing what are the different efforts made at international level, what are the different rules and regulations made at international level, let us have a glimpse of what is the real picture, what is the ground reality prevalent in at international level, so that we can plan accordingly or we can understand that okay this is the reality at international level that will be helpful for us for understanding the total scenario at international level. Let us have a look on this data. If we go by the data provided by World Health Organization as on March 2022, it highlights certain things which is as follows. In 2020, 54 percent of the global population that is around 4.2 billion people used safely managed sanitation service. Well, now it is a matter of uh, uh, concern for all of us that approximately 50 percent people, if we talk, if we discuss the data from another angle, it means around 50 percent people did not use safely managed sanitation service. 
do not you think it is a matter of great concern for us that in today's world approximately 50 percent people they are not able to use. Of course, it is a matter of great concern because it says that only 54 percent people across the world are using good sanitation services. So, well that is good news for us that well 54 percent people are fortunate enough, but what about remaining 46 percent? We are also supposed to think of her that issue. Another is that of a 1.7 billion people still do not have basic sanitation services such as private toilets or latrine. Of course, it is a big number. It is not so simple that we, we can easily ignore the data. It is a matter of serious concern that if the people they do not have the latrine, they can or they have to go for open defecation or any other alternative. So, we are also supposed to think of uh, it. Next of these 494 million is still defecate in the open. For example, in a street gutters, behind buses or into open bodies of water. 494 million open defecation as we all know that we are also in Indian society, we are also talking about the problem of open defecation and open defecation free ODF is part of our discussion every day. So, at world level if such a huge number of people they are bound to use do open defecation then how can we think that we are moving in right direction. It is not a good sign for any people, any uh, serious people that if in at world around 494 million people they are bound to do open defecation, then how can we think that we are maintaining balance in environment and sanitation that we are supposed to think. Next, in 2020, 45 percent of the household wastewater generated globally was discharged without safe treatment. Of course, we are saying that yes, we are modern, we are high tech, we are using this latest mobile phone, we are aware with all the latest innovation and scientific methods etcetera. We are supposed to use that knowledge also and this particular fact is indicative of the fact that yes, we are aware, but perhaps there is mismatch between what we know and what we do. So, there should not be any mismatch between what is our knowledge level and what can we do, because when we go by the data 45 percent of the household waste water generated globally was discharged without safe treatment, when we know that there are number of possibilities of discharging it after treatment and it can be reused, we all know that. But if we are unable to focus on, if we are unable to pay sufficient attention to it, it is a matter of serious concern. So, we are supposed to look after this issue. Next is at least 10 percent of the world's population is thought to consume food irrigated by waste water. This is another important data at global level. Next is poor sanitation reduces human well-being, social and economic development due to impacts such as anxiety, risk of sexual assault and lost opportunity for education and work. The particular data supports a number of things which we discussed in our previous lectures. First of all, it reduces human well-being, social economic development we keep on talking about that if we want to get the benefit of demographic dividend, we are supposed to pay sufficient attention to sanitation issue also and sanitation issue is not simply related to cleanliness and toilet. Of course, it is related to number of other things. Dear learners, you may remember while discussing uh, gender and sanitation, we discussed a lot regarding the problem of dropout for girl children. Because of lack of toilet facility in a school, there are number of reports related to dropout of the girl children. This particular data at international level clearly support that the lost opportunities for education and work also. It creates problem for women if they are working 
as a daily wage worker as a in different way if there is no separate toilet if they are unable to find that they will not continue their work they will not do their job and in that context it is loss for loss of human resources at national and international level another is that in indian context we did mention during our gender and sanitation issue that open defecation as women become women are um, considered as prisoners of daylight because they cannot go to relieve themselves in the day hour so they have to wait till late evening or they are supposed to go in the early in the morning and because of the particular timing they are vulnerable to sex related assault or eve teasing and which is supported by the fact when it says risk of sexual assault it means what does it mean what we discuss at national level it is not simply related to localized problem that yes we face the particular problem at india or in particular states but it is part of the global issues it is part of the global concern which happens everywhere so we are not isolated when we are not isolated we are supposed to well it is a problem but at the same time we have to think in that direction also and in this particular case the data clearly reveals that what we have been discussing in different lecture is clearly supported by the data released by the who because it clearly says that it is not the sanitation issue is not simply related to one or two things but it is closely related to a number of other things that's why it clearly says that poor sanitation reduces human well being social and economic development due to impacts such as anxiety risk of sexual assault and lost opportunities for education and work so dear learner we are supposed to think twice or thrice on such issues because it clearly related to different aspects of society that needs our special and urgent attention next stage poor sanitation is linked to transmission of diarrheal diseases such as cholera and dysentery as well as typhoid intestinal worm infections and polio it accepts rates stunting and contributes to the spread of antimicrobial instances when we say that these things are clearly there the data clearly reveals number of problems are there whether it is related to physiology it is related to psychology it is related to social different aspects are part of these problems so when at international level the data is there it clearly hints at that sanitation is closely related to it is not isolated different social aspects different psychological aspects other than of course different physiological aspects we are supposed to learn that what can be done when we talk about the problems of course whenever there is problem we all start thinking about the solution of the problem whether it is at family level whether it is at state level national level or international level so of course when any problem is there at international level we all think in that direction at international level the different agencies those who are associated to it they keep on thinking about that in that context number of conventions number of rules and regulations policies were made earlier also and recently also we were having millennium development goal for 2000 to 2015 even in millennium development goal the mdg 8 was part of it total mdg 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 eight mdgs were there and in eight mdg mdg 7 was related to to ensure environmental sustainability out of eight millennium development goals seventh was dedicated to environment and of course and after the expiry of the 2015 mdg again when sustainable development emerged and out of 17 sustainable development goals the six sdg is totally associated to it so whether millennium development goal or now we will discuss in detail about sustainable development goal efforts are being made at international level but we are supposed to think of course that what can be done at our own level 
sustainable development goal that is generally known as SDGs 2015. It was that, that by 2030, we are supposed to achieve the different goals which we are thinking that these goals should necessarily be achieved and a total of 17 goals are there and other than that for achieving these 17 goals, there are 169 associated targets. Through these 169 associated targets, we are supposed to, it is expected by 2030, we will be able to achieve the goal, all these 17 goals with the help of 169 associated targets. This sustainable development goal, the, which is known as 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, adopted at the United Nations Summit in New York in September 2015. And we are hopeful, we are optimistic that we will, even if we will not achieve 100 percent goal, we will try our best to reach nearby the 100 percent achievement related to that. SDG 6 out of 17, SDG 6 is dedicated to our issue that is sanitation and environment. SDG 6 is uh, the nomenclature of SDG 6 is water and sanitation. That is ensure availability of sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Dear learners, when we say for all, do remember you are supposed to know what is the exact meaning of for all. We just discussed at when we were discussing the WHO data that even particular facilities for 50 percent people, another facilities for less than that. So, what is the meaning of this for all? Of course, we are supposed to concern, we are supposed to think about that it is not that particular people they will get or they should get, but what about the others? They are also part and parcel of our society, they are also part and parcel of this earth. So, if we think that we should uh, grow together, we can think that yes, environment and sanitation go in proper direction, we have to think about the remaining people, those who fall in the category of all. So, when we say that uh, the sanitation issue is for all, it means we have to think that well, I am satisfied to some extent I am getting all the facilities, but my other friends, my other colleagues, my other relatives, they are not. So, what can be done for those who are unable to get all these facilities till date? This is the special meaning of for all. Well, let us discuss the different targets which we are supposed to, we are trying to achieve and we will try our best to achieve. So, here are some of the uh, important targets as decided by the sustainable development goal. So, target 6.1 is that by 2030, achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. As we keep on discussing water is basic necessity, how can we survive without water? If we are unable to provide water even to each and every one, how can we say that we are human being, we are staying in the particular society and we are closely associated to human being are closely associated to environment. So, this is the first that everyone is entitled to get water and that target we are supposed to fulfill by 2030. Next is 6.2, by 2030 achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation and hygiene for all and end open defecation paying special attention to the needs of women and girls and those who are in vulnerable situation. Well, of course, we know that open defecation is bad and we have been discussing that, that we have, we are supposed to stop the open defecation. But again, the sustainable development agenda 6.2, again it supports the situation we are having in Indian society. You may remember that while discussing gender and sanitation, we discussed that open defecation is bad for everyone, open defecation should be stopped for everyone, but it is more problematic for women. And perhaps that is why it attracts the attention of those who are there, those who are making decision, those who are planning at sustainable development. That is why it attracted and that is why it is clearly mentioned 
paying special attention to needs of women and girls because because of their one thing because of their physiological aspect because of their anatomical structure at the same time because of the patriarchal mindset present prevalent in particular society so they are there one side they are having physiological issue another side they are having the socio cultural tradition and with these two they are having psychological problem they are having psychological stress because if i will not do that what will happen if i will go there what will happen so they are facing a number of psychological issues because ultimately they have to stay in the same society neither they can ignore the physiological aspect neither they can nor they can ignore the socio cultural aspect so they are bound to follow that so the sustainable development goal also keeps an eye on it that well appendification should be stopped as soon as possible but it is more problematic for women and girl that we are experiencing in indian society also target 6.3 clearly says that by 2030 improve water quality by reducing pollution eliminating dumping and minimizing release of hazardous chemicals and materials having the proportion of untreated waste water and sustainability increasing recycling and safe reuse globally dear learners you may recall while discussing yesterday environment and sanitation we discussed about the importance of recycle reuse and reduce of course the three r's here it is also mentioned the two r's recycle and reuse is already there and of course reduce is already part of that so even that three r's theory also takes place in the sustainable development goal agenda 6.3 that we are supposed to pay sufficient attention to recycle reuse and reduce if we go by the sustainable development goal 6 target 6.4 it highlights by 2030 substantially increase water use efficiency across all sectors and ensure sustainable with draws and supply of fresh water to address water scarcity and substantially reduce the number of people suffering from water scarcity of course world is concerned about or the particular agency is concerned about the problems being faced by the individual and because everyone knows that the problem can be helped if we do not get the water so water is most important thing and of course it is realized at that level also the target 6.5 of the sustainable development goal 6 says by 2030 implement integrated water resources management at all levels including through transboundary cooperation as appropriate here it focuses on a relation between different international parts means it is not like that we can think that particular nation is compartmentalized but there is urgent need of interaction between the two different nations two different countries two different areas two different regions who can support each other because by supporting when we will be united only then we can think of any good things at that level so in this context we are supposed to understand the importance of unity at international level when we talk about international level unity of course there are number of issues whether it is related to political related to geographical related to historical but here we are supposed to concentrate on because sanitation is most important issue and for environmental concern we all are supposed to be united at international level target 6.6 it says by 2020 2030 protect and restore water related ecosystems including mountains forest wetlands river and aquifers and lakes it talks about again the achievement of related environment related aspects 
in that particular field. When we talk about target 6.1, 6.a, it says that by 2030, expand international cooperation and capacity building support to developing countries in water and sanitation related activities and programs, including water harvesting, desanitation, water efficiency, waste water treatment, recycling and reuse technology. Of course, water harvesting as we discussed that when we were discussing the historical aspect of sanitation, we already discussed that even historically we were aware of the water harvesting and that we can visit different archaeological sites and we can understand that well earlier our forefathers were also aware about the importance of water harvesting. Today, number of agencies, institutes and different level, we are also trying our best to maintain that water harvesting is most important part which can easily be done, how to save water. So, we can promote that water harvesting where we are at different capacities and water harvesting also occupies important place in sustainable development goals agenda item. It is part of the target. Target 6 point B, support and strengthen the participation of local communities in improving water and sanitation management. Of course, these are the different targets which I have taken from sustainable development goals, national indicator framework version 3.1, which is prepared by the government of India, ministry of uh, statistical planning and implementation. Well, dear learners, with the help of these uh, different targets of sustainable development goal, of course, we are discussing at international level, what is the scenario at international level. But at the same time, we are supposed to solve the issue at local level because we belong to particular society, we can do our best at our own level. For that very purpose, I have tried to collect the data I am presenting before you that well, how success we are or we have achieved this particular thing in that particular way and we are yet to achieve a number of things. So, if we understand, if we explain the data that yes, these are the achievements at the same time, these are the concerns where we are supposed to focus more attention. For that very purpose, I am presenting here or sharing with you the data related to India that what is our achievement related to sustainable development goals in India. It says, in rural area, 50 percent households had access to toilet facility in 2015-16, whereas the same has increased to 100 percent in 2019-20. Now, it is a good news dear learners for all of us that in 2015-16, it was approximately half and in 2019-20, if 100 percent uh, increase is there in toilet facility, it is a good concern that we are supposed to understand. At the same time, it is challenge for us also to ensure that really, really it is there and all the toilet facilities are supplied the water, all the other facilities are there or not, because sustainability is important pole, uh, part. We are, we are discussing already the sustainable development goals. So, if we achieve the target, how to maintain it, because society will not stop tomorrow, it will continue, problem, problem will continue. So, if we achieve any good thing, Another challenge is that how to maintain that achievement that should also be part of our concern. Next is only 18.45 percent districts achieve the open defecation free ODF target in 2016-17, while in 2019-20, 100 percent districts achieve the ODF target, open defecation free target. Again, dear learners, it is a good news for us that well 100 percent districts in, in India achieved the ODF target. Again, I will request you all just to how to we can make any efforts to maintain these 100 percent toilets at the same time to remain active that well sustainability should be maintained. Next is the per capita storage of water was 
198.02 cubic meter per person in 2015-16 and the same has increased up to 2.53.39 cubic meter per person in 2019-20. So, in clear cut increase is seen in that and again it is a good news that well we are trying our best to achieve the target and our this effort should remain there and continue to should be maintained in that. The particular the data which I am sharing is borrowed from sustainable development goals national indicator framework progress report 2020 version 2.1 of government of India's ministries report. When we talk about dear learners that India we are achieving the target of course, we are achieving the target and we are trying our best. At the same time, we are also supposed to discuss some practical aspects. Well, data is good to enjoy, good data is good to congratulate one another, but at the same time, whenever any achievement is there, achievement comes with particular challenge, achievement comes with particular threat. So, we are supposed to keep an eye on that particular level also that well we are saying that 100 percent districts have already achieved. If really it happens, then can we say that there will not be any problem related to appendification or all those toilets there in the particular area, they are having water supply, they are in a usable condition, all the members of the society they are able to use that because number of such issues are already there because Indian society is very diversified. Sometimes we may think that while in the target it is said that the facility is for all, but when we start defining the so called all at local level, perhaps we forget the meaning of the all because we may say that look you belong to that gender, that facility is not for you, look you belong to that caste, that facility is not for you, look you belong to that religion that facility is not for you. So, first of all infrastructure should be there that is good, then from socio cultural aspect also we should allow each and every one to use that particular thing, because when we talk about any facility, anything available in particular area, all the members across that whether particular individual belongs to this caste, that caste, this religion, that religion, this gender, that gender, they are supposed to use that. So, in that particular context, maybe construction of the toilet is job of particular agency, particular government or other agency, but as a human being, as a human being or as an active member of particular society, it is our responsibility to create that conducive atmosphere in the society that well, if that water facility is there, that toilet facility is there, the facilities should not be victim of any biasness, the facility should not be any victim of particular target that yes, you cannot or yes, you can. There should not be any differences and there should not be any discrimination at local level. And why we are discussing these discriminations are already there, because you might have noticed from different media and social media that number of problems are created. Dear learners, what is the benefit of learning this sociology of sanitation as a course, if we cannot change the outlook, if we cannot motivate them, if we cannot provide that atmosphere to everyone that yes, they are also part and parcel of the society they are also supposed to, they are also entitled, because when then there is any scheme, that a scheme is for particular individual, that is for human being. And as we discussed that one aspect of society, one aspect of environment is clearly related to another aspect of environment. So, for example, if that toilet facility is there or that water facility is there, we do not promote women to use that facility, we do not help women to use that facility, how can we think that women of our society will be empowered, women of our society will be able to do their jobs in different areas, it is not possible. At the same time while discussing the caste and sanitation, we discussed a lot regarding the, the existing 
caste hierarchy in our society. So, even if facilities are there, but if we do not allow the members of particular caste to use that facility or we compel the particular caste to indulge only in particular type of job, how can we say that we will be achieving sustainable development goal target? Of course, not because dear learners, we have just discussed the SDG 6 because it is related to environment. Sustainable development goals also talk about gender related aspect, poverty related aspect a number of other related aspects because it has total 17 sustainable development goals and these goals are interrelated unless until we achieve general type of neutrality or there should not be any discriminatory practices where it is related to caste, related to gender. How can we say that in India we are achieving or we are yet to achieve the goal? So, while discussing the specific targets and its achievement in Indian society, we are supposed to be very, very careful that well targets are there, achievements are there at the same time really it is for quote unquote all or not. It should not be any that well these facilities are there, but these facilities are only for particular members of the particular caste or particular gender of particular society. It should not be there. We should uh, for the sanitation sake, for the sake of protecting our environment, we are supposed to develop that society where we can think of that well caste cannot create any problem, gender cannot create any problem, religion cannot create any problem. At the same time, if region is there, in my region sufficient water is there, in another region less water is there, how can we reach them? or how can we bridge the gap between these two, one side where are we are having uh, excess of water, another side we are having lack of water. So, these things are already there. So, while talking at international level, it is not that only there should be coordination, there should be good relation between different countries, but inside India, inside Indian society, there are different regional variations there are variations inside particular area based on caste, based on gender, based on religion. These difference should not be there. Only then we can say that well India is on the right track. So, for saying India is on the right track, we are supposed to make a lots of efforts which are there at local level that may not attract the media concern or any other individual though are those who are there at higher level, but our conscience is there. Your conscience should not tell you that yes, you are doing a bad thing. Maybe I am not being observed by others, but if I am doing bad thing, my conscience will keep on telling me no, 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 it is bad, no, 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 it is bad. We are not supposed to. So, when we think that yes, at common level we can do particular thing. At common level, we can think that yes, at common level, we all will do the best and there should not be any discriminatory practices because the data clearly says that we have achieved, but there should not be any mismatch between the data and the reality. And when we talk about collective concerns, right now I am reminded of Emile Durkheim's ideas on collective concerns. He talks about that. And in that while explaining the social fact, Emil Durkheim clearly talks about the collective concerns in the sense that we start thinking at that level. It is not like that, that we the members of the society, one or two members they think and they can go beyond that. At individual level, the members of the society, they decide the norms, patterns, culture of that. At that level individuals play important role. But when it becomes social fact, when it takes the form of sui generis social fact, then it all the individuals collective concerns create important role or play important role in that. Same collective concerns keeping in mind that, that well now it is exterior to individual. Same we have to think that well if we frame that idea in the society, that well in our society no one will get 
not get the benefit of any environmental related aspects or sanitation related aspects, it should not be there. Everyone will get all the benefits related to sanitation, related to environment, whether the member belongs to this caste or that caste, this gender or that gender. So, we will not create that atmosphere in the society, we will promote healthy atmosphere in the society. It is not only beneficial for the society, but for the nation or at larger level, at international level, we will be able to provide good data. We may prove that yes, with our determination and despite the fact that we always promote unity in diversity. So, let the world know that yes, a unity in diversity is our strength, it should not be part of our weakness. So, for that making unity in diversity as a strength, we are also supposed to relate it with the sanitation and environment related aspects that dear learners we are supposed to keep in mind while discussing the data and while preparing for next things related to sanitation. Well, there are number of efforts made at international level and of course, we are part of nation and when the different nations they contribute then only it becomes the data at international level or only then at international level any efforts can be made. In that context, on 28 July 2010, through resolution 64-292, the United Nations General Assembly explicitly recognized the human right to water and sanitation and acknowledged that clean drinking water and sanitation are essential to the realization of all human rights. Dear learners, I knowingly highlighted the human rights. You can understand that now water and sanitation is part and parcel of human right. Of course, the moment birth takes place, we are human. As a human, you are supposed to get certain human rights and now water and sanitation is part and parcel of human right. Dear learners, of course, now it is part of the human right. As we keep on discussing, we all are human being, but human beings should remain being human. If we all think in that direction, then perhaps UN agency or others may not declare sanitation and water as human right. Why they are bound to declare that perhaps they might have thought that without declaring, it will not be realized like that. So, we have to develop that conscience, we have to think in that direction that yes, water and sanitation should really be human right and everyone is entitled because one is human. So, all the human beings are entitled to get sufficient water and sanitation as part of human right. So, this was a big step so far as considering sanitation and water as human right. The resolution calls upon states and international organizations to provide financial resources, help capacity building and technology transfer to help countries, in particular developing countries, to provide safe, clean, accessible and affordable drinking water and sanitation for all. Again, dear learners, it says sanitation for all. Do remember when it uses the term sanitation for all, what does it mean? When it says sanitation for all, it means it is clearly saying that yes, sanitation is important not only for a pockets, particular pockets, but it is necessary, it is important for all the members, those who are part of this earth. Again, important effort made at international level is that in November 2002, the Committee on Economic social and cultural rights adopted general comment number 15 on the right to water article 1.1 states that the human right to water is indispensable for leading a life in human dignity. It is a prerequisite for the realization of other human rights. Comment number 15 also defined the right to water as the right to of everyone to sufficient, safe, 
acceptable and physically accessible affordable water for personal and domestic uses. Dear learners, here again I would like to highlight particular thing. It says that safe, acceptable and physically accessible and affordable water. When it also talks about physically accessible, you may recall that when we were discussing gender and sanitation, we discussed that as per the latest data of National Family Health Survey. National Family Health Survey fourth data clearly reveals that in India, 15 and above years women, 80 percent women, they bring the water and compared to their counterpart, 15 plus male, only 16 percent male, they bring the water. You can understand that adult 16 percent male and adult 80 percent female, they bring the water and when it was asked that it is not like that just within 2 minutes or 3 minutes, in some cases it takes more than 30 minutes. So, when it is said that accessible, we are supposed to understand that again accessible, physically accessible for both. Right now what we are doing as the data clearly reveals that 80 percent women, they are carrying compared to 16 percent and if we think about the children even below the age of 15 years, 3 percent girl, they bring the water compared to less than 1 percent boy, they bring the water. So, when we talk about physical accessibility, here we are also supposed to remain very conscious about the gender issue that is it the responsibility of women and women only, because then there is big gap between 80 percent and 16 percent, you can easily understand the gap. So, not only that we are supposed to ensure the physical accessibility of water, at the same time physical accessibility of water for whom by whom, of course, we are supposed to minimize the gender gap that it should be accessible, but men should also take active part the data should not remain for another round of different surveys. So, dear learners that is why I highlighted this issue related to physically accessible and affordable water. And of course, the source of the data is resolution of the United Nations General Assembly of 2010. Dear learners, another number of international efforts were made. And these are some of the most important efforts made at international level. International decade for action, water for life 2005 to 2015 was declared. Then World Toilet Organization declared November 19 as World Toilet Day, which has been held every year since 2001. Dear learners, you can easily understand that sometimes we even uh, face difficulty in using the word toilet, it is met considered matter of shame. But when it is declared that November 19 will be considered as World Toilet Day, it was just to make them aware that those who are the policy makers, those who are the planners, those who are working at different levels or those the normal individual, they should learn that okay, there is one toilet day there are different days are there, we keep on celebrating different days. And this is the importance of this world toilet day, that at least on that November 19, we keep on thinking for a while that okay, is there any importance of toilet in our life? Of course, toilet plays important role in our life and it is clearly related to environment and sanitation. So, this world toilet day is most important keeping in mind the sanitation and environment and it is not simply the uh, date uh, which are assigned to particular uh, celebrating particular thing like toilet, but we are supposed to at least on that day if we spread the message that well toilet is not simply simple thing, but it is a tool of social change toilet can make a number of difference in anyone's life merely presence of one toilet can change the life of the girl who is victim of the dropout. The toilet can change the life of a girl who became the victim of eve teaching. Even the simple toilet can do a number of other things in any individual's life. 
So, this word toilet they is just symbolic, but we are supposed to understand that at least by celebrating word toilet day on November 19, we are supposed to spread the message that what is the importance of one toilet or when one toilet can change the lives of any individual. Then on 20th December 2006, the United Nations General Assembly declared 2008 as International Year of Sanitation. Dear learners, you can understand that well one day is important, but when whole year is dedicated to sanitation, you can understand the importance of the sanitation what is realized at international level. Declaring one whole year to sanitation is not very small thing. It is very big thing that 2008 was declared international year of sanitation. Well, dear learners, simply that we can participate in that. Of course, when we declared particular year that well it will be dedicated to sanitation, it clearly hints at the concern of individual at international level. Well, when that was celebrated during 2008 throughout the year that played a major role and perhaps that is why we are boasting of that yes, we are achieving open defecation free or we are achieving SDG target in that particular area or we are successful in doing that. Dear learners, of course, these are some good steps taken at international level, but of course, policies and plannings at higher level is there, but it should be deeply rooted in local level because ultimately you will do the job at local level and unless until you think that yes, I can do at local level and for doing that at local level, for implementing at local level, there is urgent need of thinking or changing the outlook, thinking in the direction of that whether the particular systems, norms, patterns, values of my society is in tune with the existing pattern or is it going to have good effect or bad effect related to sanitation. Because society is dynamic, society keeps on changing. We cannot say that society is static. That is why you cannot blame that no, 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 we cannot do anything. Of course, you can make a difference. Single individual can make a difference. We are having number of examples where single individual did a number of things and we keep on mentioning their names. So, let others also talk about that. Yes, she did wonderful thing, he did wonderful thing. So, we cannot escape ourselves that well, I cannot do anything alone. Yes, you can do. That is why this is the purpose of social of sanitation that if you spread the message, if you think that in my area, local area, because problems can be identified only at local level. At larger level, problems can be understood, but so far as its solution is there, because every society is unique. There is nothing like universal rules and regulations in the society. We are having typical norms and patterns related to our caste, related to our ethnic group, related to our religion, related to our gender. And if we attach a special attention related to sanitation to it, if it will become part of our life, it, if it will become part of our tradition, if it will become part of our lifestyle, then perhaps we are not supposed to think of there are different days, different years, different rules and regulations, different targets, different schemes, because if anything becomes part of our lifestyle, naturally we start doing that without thinking, without being conscious that yes, I have to do that, of course not. So, try your best that you, if anything that is there that is lacking in norms, patterns and values that you practice, you should modify it because society is very liberal. Ultimate aim of all the members of the society that yes, how can our society make progress. So, progress is part and parcel of life. Every day we keep on thinking that yes, these are different things, these are the different steps. If we take these steps, maybe your step will be a baby step. Do not assume that well particular thing will be done and that will be there at international level. Of course not, just take a baby step. That is why we do in our personal life also. We start from a little thing. So, do not think to just in one go I will do any big thing. 
if we change the life of one individual, if you change life of one caste, if you change the life of particular gender, if you provide an opportunity to a single individual, then you are not only changing individual's life, but you are playing active role in creating change in the lives of the whole caste, lives of the particular gender, lives of the family, those who are associated to it and it is related to long term effect in the family. If one toilet is there, toilet will not be for 2 years, 3 years, it will remain. So, not only particular individual will get the benefit of that toilet, will get the benefit of that uh, water supply, but naturally it is related to other aspect of life. For example, if one gets proper sanitation facility, proper toilet facility, proper water facility, it is not only related to psychological and social aspect, it will minimize their cost. So, economically it will be beneficial for them and if anything which is beneficial economically also, they may use that economy, they may use that money instead of health aspect, they may use that in their education, in their welfare, in their other overall development of personality. So, dear learners, you just think of uh, the issue that these are different aspects which we discussed in context of international level, level, but you are supposed to place it at local level and you should think at your level that what can be done at my local level, so that it can glo go up to global level. So, local level to glo global level and that will be bridging the gap between global, global village. So, dear learners, this is all about from my side related to sanitation at international level and what is the situation of sanitation at international level. These are some suggested readings for you. Muhammad Akram's Sociology of Sanitation, H. M. Johnson's Sociology a Systematic Introduction, B. K. Nagla's Sociology of Sanitation, Richard Pius's Sociology of Sanitation, Bindasar Pathak's edited book Sociology of Sanitation, Environmental Sanitation, Public Health and Social Deprivation, Asis Saxena's book Sociology of Sanitation, Anil Vaghela's book Sociology of Sanitation. Well, dear learners, in next episode, in the ninth lecture, we will discuss something about the government policies and plannings related to sanitation in Indian society. I hope you might have enjoyed the lectures and it proved to be for you educative, illuminative and informative at the same time of course, interesting. Thanks a lot dear viewers. My name is Gillette Sam and I teach sociology at uh, IIT Kanpur. Uh, one of the things you must have noticed uh, if you read or if you talk to people around you is that they often refer to uh, something called globalization or they often say we live in a global world. What does this mean? Uh, today I will tell you about how to think about globalization or interpret the word global in a sociological manner. When sociologists refer to globalization, they refer to three things. The first is that there are, uh, that it involves uh, transplanetary processes, which means that something is going on uh, across multiple borders, right. Uh, the second is that it involves heightened liquidity and uh, interconnected flows. Uh, now, by liquidity, and this is a term that uh, was coined by the sociologist uh, Zygmunt Bauman, uh, we refer to the increasing interconnectedness of things across the globe, 
but we also refer to uh, increasing instability across the world, which means that potentially something that is occurring many million, uh, okay, many kilometers away from you um, actually influences the place that you live in.